Well, man, behind the scenes, it's a new day. It can only mean one thing. It's time for a new project. New project, new project on the new project, project truck. So uh, I think today we're going to try to tackle the third axle. Lieutenant Dan needs a third axle. That's giving me a headache just thinking about it. Gee, <laughs> Uh, well, I'm gonna let you handle that. Let's that uh, truck. Let's do it. All right. All right, so here's kind of the plan of attack. I have went on the internet and printed off a technical procedure install manual for a Hendrickson lift axle. You know what, like every measurement in this manual says? I'm scared. Customer provided measurement. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I'm not gonna say it's not any help, but it's not as much help as I'd hope for it to be. So I think what we're gonna do is there is some measurements in there that are kind of crucial we wanted to have it as back as far as we can we want to take as much off these as possible and put as much weight on that as possible uh and the farther back it is the less abrasive it is when you turn um i think i think it's just the old uh trial and error method is what's going to happen here um this everything else you, everything else has went so well like i don't even want to attempt to put this in there because i feel like it's going to be the one that's going to just like be a disaster i really hope this is wrong somebody's probably already skipped forward in the video and figured out if it worked or not but we don't have that option we can't just like skip forward <laughs> i'm putting this one on your shoulders all right so first things first though, i think we need to do is we need to get the axle underneath the truck i think once we get it underneath the truck we'll go ahead and put the tires on it to help stabilize it and hold the distance uh and then from there we're just gonna have to um see what we need to do to make drive line angles and all that good stuff work so all right only thing i know about this is we want to make sure they are in line with the truck and not at no bad angle That's yeah that would be uh <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I've stalled as long as I can stall. I think it's time to install. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Step one: cut loose from skid. Father Time almost did that for us. Yeah. You know what would probably be handy? I don't know if I got them. Is them. Uh, dollies we got from the uh, georgia dome yeah yes they would let's take the crane let's pick it out here and set it on the ground and go from there All right, that actually went pretty smooth. That slid in there. I got uh, He-Man over here. I guess we can call you Popeye Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people will get that joke. You gonna explain? This well, is, we need to take this opportunity to explain a few things. No, we don't. So, so your nickname is actually Sweet Pea, right? On the job, yes, they so, call him Sweet Pea. So whenever he's bowling, they call him Sweet Pea. But it started out as Little Popeye. Let's make it clear there. Because his dad's nickname is Popeye. Yeah. And Sweet Pea's the little, the little insufficient thing. helper. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's Popeye wannabe. <laughs> so, AKA, anyway, we're, we're way off track. But hey, if I stick with you, I'll be able to run, you teach me everything you know, I'll be able to run equipment better than him, won't I? <laughs> Go ahead, answer that. Mom will watch. Yeah, your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always giving Aaron a hard time in the videos and his mom will comment and she agrees with me. <laughs> okay, anyways, we're off track here. So 
We just got this randomly up here. So what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna throw the tires on this so we can kind of use that to roll it back and forth a little bit since we're in there. I'm going to build an alignment tool. These axle has alignment holes in them. So I'm gonna build an alignment tool that, that matches this spacing to this spacing. And basically we're going to space that lift axle equal distance. So all three tires will be spaced equal distance. That's what we're gonna end up going with. So no matter what tire configuration or what I end up going with, it should work. That was the best idea you had all day too. I was very proud of you. I got a lot of ideas. Every once in a while, one of them's gotta be a good one. <laughs> so Aaron's gonna pop the tires on. I'm gonna get some stuff uh, made to make our alignment tool and uh, yeah. You done yet? Where's on you? Ah, nut. All right, here we go. All right, tires are on. Woo! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Should have known better. I'm gonna steal your Superman gloves after that stunt. I loved it. <laughs> you asked for them. Uh, you're gonna, hey, you're gonna pay I had for to clean them up. I want them. <laughs> Still can't hold on. <laughs> <Goodness laughs> this is going from bad to worse. All right. So uh, you guys seen my amazing machining skills. I got so much to learn on a lathe. But the whole thought process is, is that'll stick in there like that. I think you can go ahead and weld one of these on there at a 90 degree angle. Are you mad at me? Huh? Not yet. <laughs> weld one of those okay. on there at a 90 degree angle, and then we'll put it up here and weld the other one. That sounds like a plan. You done yet? <coughs> Waiting on you. Done yet? You got it fit up for me? You done yet? Yeah, I've made all the pieces. All you gotta do is put it together. Well, that's part of being a machinist, just a fit up guy. All right, let me find a square. All right, so there we go. That fits right in there. That fits right in there. Now the real question is, we'll go around the air side of the truck and see if it's the same. Yeah. If it's not, we're just gonna readjust your tool. <clears throat> Fits in there. Oh, that is spot on. So now what we'll do is we'll go from here to there. Well, basically that needs to be slid back quite okay. a bit actually. Drag it slide back a little bit. Yep. All right, let's get, I think what we need to do is get it up on that jack where it's a little bit more level. All right. Well, let me raise that front end. Here, right there. Now we should be able to just kind of roll it back. Need to take that crane a little far too, don't we? All right, we went up too far on this side. Okay. Let's get her close for now. There yep. we go. That's pretty. Got to be pretty close right there. So let's uh, let's get some eyeballs on that and see what she looks like. All right, guys, you're gonna have to forgive me for a little bit. We went into serious thinking mode here. I had to put the camera down and concentrate. Don't worry, we'll get you guys caught up to speed a little bit. Here is the gist of what's going on. So, the International built this Paystar 5000 back in 1990. I don't think they ever, ever intended on it ever having a lift axle on it. And uh, I didn't custom order a lift axle. I found what I could find cheap on Facebook market side. So we're trying to put a lift axle on a truck that never wanted to have one. 
and we don't actually have the right lift axle to go underneath it, but uh, that's not going to stop us from making it work. No. So, with all that being said, after reading and studying the manual and figuring out a whole bunch of charts and calibrations and different things, and I don't know if I can explain this to you guys. Um, this is the style we got, which is the HM, HLM2. Uh, a bunch of these numbers correspond back to these charts. Gives me a headache just thinking about it again. It's, yeah. But basically what we have to do is we have to determine um, ride height based off the frame versus loaded tire radius to the ground uh, versus loaded frame dimension from bottom of frame to the ground. Now this truck's not loaded and um, I'm trying to build as much versatility into this thing as we can because I don't know if we're going to change tire sizes. I don't know if what I, things may change in the future. So we're trying to find a happy overall medium. Now we knew going into this thing that we had to, we were most likely going to have to shim this down off the frame after measuring, reading the book, the charts, studying, scratching our head, we determined this thing needs to be shimmed down three inches, which is the max acceptable shimming according to the expert in the black and white pamphlet over there, which we can make that work. It's tight, we can make it work, correct? Correct. You have no idea what I'm talking. You've just been following along and saying yip, 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 yip all day long. I'm just thinking WWW. <laughs> <laughs> what would Wade do? <laughs> That'd be a good I, video. I like his idea better. <laughs> but we may have more pieces. To yeah, we'd have more pieces. So. We end up getting some three inch, three eighths wall tubing. It's way heavier than what we need, but man, we're not taking any chances on this thing. This truck is primarily being built for off-road purposes. We're putting a lift axle underneath it so we can get some capacity whenever we do haul on road. I wanna have that option. So um, my goal is to be able to haul 20 ton with this truck. So we're putting a lot of steel in, it's gonna be heavy. I still think we can get a 20 ton payload on this truck legally. Let's keep that in mind. So anyway. We got some three inch spacers on there. They're tacked in there. The, they, they will be welded to the actual lift axle. Everything will end up being bolted to the frame. Um, so we got our spacing up and down figured. Uh, you guys seen our alignment tool we used. That got our alignment axle to axle. Now, I'm sure somebody's already commented. Yes, I fully know that that is adjustable and it can be aligned after it's mounted, but both of them are clocked in the same direction right here and we just wanted to get it close we wanted those brackets close so if we need to fine tune it later we can but we're fine tuning less than a quarter or a half inch not like inches or something um so we're pretty close on that so after all that's said and done this truck's got to move we need a drive shaft mm -hmm. so i know a lot of you guys are wondering well this thing's never going to get a drive shaft it's never going to fit it's never going to work I agreed with you a few times today, but I think we got a plan. The trick to making this work is what 90% of the trucks I've ever been around that have a lift axle on them, the way they work is they come out of the back of the transmission, in this case it's the transfer case, they go to the lift axle and they put a carrier bearing on it. So this section of the drive shaft here just turns, it does not articulate, go left, right, flop up and down or move, it's just a straight piece of shaft. With these cross members, that dip in the axle we got a substantial probably 8 to 12 inch circle in there where we can get a drive shaft and a carrier bearing through which is sufficient for what we want to do. So then we'll come out of the carrier bearing and we'll have what we call a prop shaft that goes from the carrier bearing to there. That'll have the slip yoke in it. It'll be adjustable. One thing about this truck is it has this walking beam suspension on it and it's, I don't know if it's, 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 soup, it's souped up. I don't know if it's because it's a military truck or what. But this thing has a tremendous amount of articulation, which makes that drive shaft move up and down a lot. Now, before it had, I don't know, what did we measure, 20 inch prop shaft in it? Yeah. And that was a lot of angle on those U-joints whenever it was up and down like that. It's probably gonna be around a 30 inch prop shaft now, which should help our U-joint angles quite a bit. So that is, that is the plan on that. So with all that being said, one thing we haven't quite got figured out yet is we got to shin these airbags up and those airbags change angles. They go up and down. Uh, this was our first attempt here and it's close, but we, we need to tweak it. Uh, we got we got to tweak the angle of that plate to, uh, to make it work. 
But I think what we decided at this point is before we go any farther, get crazy welding stuff off, bolting, anything like that, I think we're gonna make a trip to the drive shaft shop in the morning and uh, run this idea past him, make sure he's uh, kosher with everything we got going on. We got a few drive line angles and stuff we need to make sure we can match up and do, do the right stuff there. So I think at this point, we're going to confirm drive shaft uh, angles and placement, carrier bearings, yada, yada, yada. And um, if all that pans out, it'll just be a matter of figuring out the plate on the bottom of these airbags. And I think it'll work. I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work. One way or another. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. So, but check her out, guys. That's what she's gonna look like as a triaxle. That tire looks kind of puny compared to the rest of them, but uh, she's coming along. She is coming along. <laughs> Every piece we put on this truck, I'm just loving it more and more. But anyways, uh, I'll see if I can't take you guys along with me to the drive shaft shop tomorrow. We'll talk to those boys, see what they got going on, and uh, make sure everything's kosher there. If they give us the stamp of approval, full steam ahead. All right, guys, new day. We rolled in perfection drive line. These guys have been top notch. They've taken care of me for years. This is where we got all the parts from the Mack truck and Captain yeah. Clayton tore it up. So anyway, Scott here has hooked us up. I think we decided, Scott, we're going to reuse the back prop shaft. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You're not concerned about the angles or anything since this is pretty much what it was doing before? Yep. So uh, you did some math. I think you're going to build us a shaft. Was it 40? 42. And we're going to make it 42 inches from end of cap, center carrier bearing. Awesome. And then we'll get our carrier bearing on there, and you think we'll be good to go? Yes, sir. I'm sure will. He's the man. He said give him two hours, and he'll have this thing whipped out. So we're going to run some other parts. We'll be back to check on you. Take your time. We'll be back. Thank you, Scott. You bet. All right, next stop is Auto Will and Rim. It says customer parking only. I guess if we park here, that means you got to buy something if we go in. Ah, uh, yeah, I am. I plan on it so, with your car. Hey, I did have a mask in here. Yeah, I had it. I hung it up on your shifter. Pole. I like the I like the black ones. They're much more stylish than the blue ones. You're right. All right, let's go see what we can find. All right, just left Auto Will and Rim. Managed to spend a thousand dollars. What did you buy? <laughs> you told me. We got customer uh, parking only. Yeah, I was well, gonna park here. I had think, to buy something. I think we earned our parking spot. <laughs> we got uh, brake relay valves. We got a control valve for the uh, lift axle. We got cord. We got brake lines. We got. Uh, we even got duster to blow the dust out of yeah. my computer. Yep. You thought you'd think you would have got a free Pepsi after spending off. I know. There, you didn't get one. They didn't have a Pepsi machine in there. Let's go back and uh, check on Scott. Hopefully Let's we got enough uh, enough money to pay for a drive shaft. I'm, feel, I'm feeling a lot better about this build after we, the uh, drive shafts are in. We may have to uh, put the build on pause and go back to work for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, anyways, we're leaving not a wheel and rim. We got a pretty good haul here, a lot of parts we needed. Hey, buddy, we're heading banging back. in like a hair on a biscuit. <laughs> heading back to uh, head back to pick up our drive shaft and hopefully head back to the shop. So away we go. Back down here perfection. They're still getting our drive shaft built. They got the ends in. Getting ready to get her uh, welded up. They've got these tools he puts on there and that keeps that clock. These these caps got to be stay in line with each other. I'll explain that more when we get back to the shop, but uh, she's looking good. Is it almost like a double berry? More and more excited. You're just tweaking that, trying to get the run out out of it? Yeah, we're down to about two thousandths. What's uh, what's acceptable? Five. Five. Well, you're you're in the you're in the no, window. We'll try to get it on the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the straighter it is, the better off. Now, after we weld it, you know, it may tweak this a little bit, right? And then we can straighten her up. So we're gonna straighten. Her up. Oh, you don't want to move. Her. It's tight there. Getting closer. This is just enough. This is not the normal where we get 
it's normal too. You can get about 10,000 on the tube, but I always try to get it down next to yeah. the tube. But this tube that we get is a little, has a couple flat spots. Yeah, that's it. Now is that, is that tube a special? Just, just drive line tubing, yes it is. Just drive line tubing. Just drive line tubing, it's 180 wall, 180 thick, 4.593 and OD. Gotcha. But it's 180. Man, you got her close, you got her close. Look at that. No. I like it. I thought you were getting up when you didn't need one. Yep. I got faith in you. I, can, I, I got faith in you. You can do it without it. You're getting a little jealous right now. It's <laughs> off great. I don't know, man, behind the scenes. You might have some competition. I know it. Well, he's, look at the setup he's got. You don't want me to this fancy stuff. <laughs> 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 like, it's all we used to play there for, just feet on and well. That's it. Yep. Yeah. That's our operational leg, and then that is our balancer. So each, but, each leg's got its job. Exactly. This is it. And this is in a doodle right here. <laughs> What is that, controlled cooling? This is the proper way to do it, not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you gotta use what you got. <laughs> That's how you turn a driveline shop into a sauna. Yeah. <laughs> I figured you'd have to ping it. I didn't think it would no, do it like No, no, man. That's how we straighten them up. Here we go. Well, we got a little dirty. Yeah, you see it. A little dirty gauge. We come in here and just heated a few uh, random should've, spots. Should've, we should have got that on. We'll yeah. try. We'll do it on the rear here, but see, it's on got the that, uh... And it's not broke. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's like, hey, ain't that broke? <laughs> no, it's just perfect. So let's see, man. And see, the straight up, you can get that midship. Show you that drop line to run all the time. But that's, that's <clears> what you want to... Need to straighten it midship. Everything else we could, you know, you can either straighten it up in the truck, like right? That many yeah. times, you know, but you can't because the bearings on it right there. So, see how bad this one is? We're going to straighten this up a little bit too. Okay, now we're going to turn it up somewhat. See? If we have some good national tubes, it's still wrapped the best to make. But we've uh, we've had one backwards. So we've got to go. And, and I mean, this is good too, but it just has a couple of spots. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's still good too, but not like that national. That national tube is round, good to work with, no jumping up and down. There's a trick also here. We're going to try to get it cooled or cooled down from where it's cooled. Whoa. Well, but... Whoa. Whoa. It's not too bad. So, there we are. So, we're probably about 10 right there. We're going to go right there. That's probably So, you go, you go to the high spot? Go to the high side. And what we're going to do is manipulate it. So, we're going to raise this up so it's going to make it even higher. Okay. We're going we're to we're heat it up and it's going to grow about 10 inches. I'm not... 10,000. 10,000. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a cool. That's a retake. Yeah. <laughs> that's a cool magic trick there. 
So, and then, but like, when we cool it, it's probably going to come down to 15. Okay. So we've already, now we've grown five off of it. Okay, it's just a little over. We're going to say it's real close to about 15, but we're going to say that we're right on, it's like the 20. It's crazy you put that heat on there and lose the most immediately. Yeah, see this? So, so right there, we've pulled it 10. We're going to go yeah. about 15 here. Let's just see here. Okay. Now, now, huh? now we're going to cool it down. Now I have my own little technique. Instead of just blasting the center, I like to take off sides right here. Oh, I just hit it good enough. So here we're coming up on our 20. I like it. I ain't gonna move much this side. And all the time. I mean that. I mean yeah, you got it. Yeah, they were coming up. So now we're we took five off of it. You might have to do that a time too, especially if this 180. Yep, this stuff does not, it doesn't move. Yeah, you got about half of it out of there. Yeah. So we're going to give it one more little zap right there. Now it almost keeps one more little zap here. Crazy how much that moves. Yeah. It's hard to get some off of right where we just pulled it at. So, besides it having that one little hump, right, and that's the seam. That's, in the, it. that's the seam in the tube, yeah. yeah. So, under that, I'm going to say that. Oh, yeah. That is nice. It's good and straight. It that's is good and straight. That's all we worry about right here. Remember, we don't like things to be crooked or anything like that. Make sure they're good and straight. That's the point. You think I could have got it that good in the shop? No. You don't like no. I could have? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Best bearing made right. right there. Best bearing made right there, he said. Well, we're going to put that bearing to the test. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. So you do anti seize those splines, huh? Yeah. Is it very, you know, if you ever shake that off before, sometimes if they get stuck on oh, there, yeah. you know, did they got seven, eight hundred thousand miles on them, you know, they won't come off. So now we have to put a little more on them, except for the ones we do. Tight fit. I can say it, but I think you're going to like to watch Scott work more than they like to watch it. I know. He's going to be the new star of the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now Scott, is that uh, is that spline tapered or is that a straight fit? Straight fit. Straight fit. But it's probably just still just a little bit warm, warm so that's why it went yeah, on so hard. Yeah. Gotcha. All these components, spicer. All spicer. Yeah. So I want to see this. What's the proper way to install a U joint? Oh, okay. Here we go. So, because I never, I've never seen me throw one. down the instructions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, I like that grease gun too. Man, it's awesome right here. Hey, his still works. Yeah. yeah. 
This is our second or third one. <laughs> we grease everything. We just got plenty of grease in it. Always, always like to grease the caps. And you notice how he cleaned that grease off the end before he was putting it back up? Nobody That's thought, another. I, hey, I like Scott. Scott's, I Scott, Scott's, the, star Scott. This, Scott's yeah. the star of this video. Yeah. Hey, you're that guy that's the star. Here we go. Always put the grease spinning. This is in the vehicle, spinning up on the right hand side as you're in the okay. vehicle. So we're going to put this slot power on so we don't lose well that's that's the caps. first the first issue i've never where'd you get that from spicer <laughs> yeah that's a spicer yeah that's a re little tab here that helps so it just holds in that groove yeah hold so you so the caps uh, don't come off yeah uh, yeah I, I, don't you trust me, that? I, yeah you know how many times i've counted every needle bearing in there trying to make sure i had them all Tool for everything. Like right here, just on the right hand side. Get that trunnion and stick it out as far as you can get it. Get the yep. cap started on there. Kind of get it in line. They, they always fit better when they're new, Scott. They sure do. <laughs> and, it's still, and it's a little bit warm. Yeah. You see, it just goes right in. <laughs> see, there's, there's a lot of tricks in there, Yes. Here. Same with this side, pull it out enough, get it started. Oh, that one really went in. It is still warm. I don't know what one to go on that easy. Think it'll go on the truck this easy? I <laughs> think it will. I like to just take Scott with us. <laughs> <laughs> now, where are you guys out of? Uh, but by Tell City. By Tell City. Derby, yeah. Indiana. Derby, Derby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, okay. Because we did some stuff with you guys in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. Now, Scott, will this particular drive shaft get balanced, or is that not required on this one? It's not going to be required on this one. And what's the... Uh, if it was like a two-piece drive line, since we're so straight... We yeah. don't have to worry about that? Yeah. We gotcha. We don't have to worry about it, yeah. But now, I'll say, if we were making a complete two-piece with another one being about this same length... Yes, I'll... You'd I'll, balance I'll, it. Yes, and would you balance that all as an assembly? The whole assembly, yeah. Both pieces as one complete unit. Gotcha. So you can't... Really, I mean, I could just balance this, but now we're only balancing the front half. Right, right. Now, you know, if the weight's off the one side, you got your rear shaft on here, it might be too much on... One side, it, gotcha. Both as one complete unit. Any drive shaft, that is a two-piece drive line, pickup truck, van... Don't matter. needs to be, yep. Gotcha. 45 foot pounds. cavity full of some grease well it might be a little tough getting this in the yeah, yeah. The transmission i got a guy for that scott you got him i got him yeah yeah and look i'm just going to stick these on this end yep now you got um which is probably the other one so you got straps and everything that yep yep we got everything else we need Well, I appreciate you letting us watch, Scott. That was pretty damn neat. You guys are more than welcome. Come back anytime. That was awesome. Now we just got. Man, I'm still in awe. Now we, now we <laughs> just got to hope it fits. Yeah. So real quick here, our measurement right here. This should be 17. We're going to say 17, 18 inches center to center. So if we go 18 inches to right here. This is going to be 68 inches, but then plus the other two inches, it's going to make a 70 inches in the cap to in the cap. Yeah. Awesome. That's where you can go with this. In the cap to right here, we're yep. saying it's 18 inches. So if we even went 18 inches, we're right on the money. We're gonna, it's going to be right on the money. I mean, right there at 69. But and if we're a half inch off one way or another, it'd be perfect. It'd be so perfect, that'd be yeah. in the cap to in the cap. Actually, the center that you join is back. It's not quite to the flat. Right. You ever have to measure these? That it sits back. The center that you joined is actually a quarter inch. Oh, back, back from the, from the flat. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, let's All right, load her up, pay our bill, and get out of here. Matt, you want paint, man? We like to paint them. No. You don't want no paint? Perfect. Nope. No, don't worry about painting it. The whole truck's going to get painted, so we'll paint it then. Perfect.
Awesome. Hey. Up. Thanks, Scott. You bet. Thank you. All right, Scott, we are getting ready to pull out of here and you spotted something. Yes, it needs this dust cap plug that is at the end of the slip yoke. You can see it is missing. I'll show you. We can look all, all the right. way through. We'll look all the way through this. In the joint, let's look at it. You know what I'm saying? Only too bad. They're starting to get a couple little marks on it. Other than that, I'm going to say they still got some good life in so it. So whenever see you're that? looking at this, you're looking yep. at the, that see right them, there? See them small little marks on there? That's from the... That's from that needle bearing in there wearing on that? Yep, eating into the trunnion, which is super hard, but sometimes it would just have some slight marks here. You can't, you can't even feel them. But so you, you say, you think I'm that joint... I'm going to say, yeah, runner. it still has, yeah. But that dust cap keeps that grease from, or keeps dirt from getting in here and eating yes. up that spline, right? Yes, and that right? dirt... That dirt will eat the glyco right off of this. And then it'll be loose. Gotcha. And you can still see that the glyco still looks pretty decent on here. Let me get up here, but yeah, that keeps all that dirt out of there. Let's get this here off. This is what I need in the shop. The press? Yes. This is the jewel right here. How many thousands of U joints do you think that thing's pressed out? Man, quite a few. <laughs> quite a few. More David, than two. how are you? Super. Yeah. Oh. Come on here and there. You know what you're doing? I think so. That's way, way easier than a hammer. Pretty easy, you got the right tool. It is. Yeah, <laughs> sharp. What is that thing, Scott? It's a plastic plug. Really? Yeah. And it just keeps all the crud out from... Getting in there? Getting in there. Yeah. I guess that's just a, this is actually, a, yeah, to the front, you know. Right, all, all the... All the duct, crud, everything's blowing back this way. And boy, as soon as it gets on in there, it, it eat them up in no time. Really? Yeah. It is pressed in there, huh? Yep. Yeah. It kind of almost breaks it. Yeah, but it... Be careful so you don't snap it because it will... It's all it is. Huh. Nicky, Guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching Scott work as much as what we did. He is a true master of his trade. It was uh, it was so cool. These guys did not have to let us back there uh, to watch this happen. Scott did not have to let us video any of this. Uh, they were just nice enough to let us do it. So be sure you guys give these guys a little bit of love in the comments to... Uh, allow us to sit in and kind of participate here a little bit and and kind of invade their workspace for here for about an hour or so like i said i am not sponsored by spicer i'm not sponsored by perfection hydraulics perfection drive lot any of these guys uh they were just nice enough to let us slide in there and check everything out and this is the first time i've i've had several drive shafts built and i've seen bits and pieces of it over the years but this was the first time i was able actually to see one from start to finish and kind of see a little tricks of the trade it's just like anything else there's so there's so much more involved to it than what you realize until you actually uh actually see it done or, or see it from start to finish but uh, these guys do have a pretty good size following on facebook they do a lot of stuff in the uh Polaris ranger and razor off-road uh lifts and uh driveline upgrades they also get into the jeep stuff a little bit so uh if you want to check them out it's ctc Com commercial truck components and perfection drive lines. Uh, like I said, I just uh, can't thank these guys enough for letting us uh, slide in there and and, uh, and see this see this being done and, and watch Scott here, man. You can tell he's been doing this for uh, for a lot of years. So 
unfortunately this video is going to get a little bit lengthy here thanks to these guys we got some extra video we weren't counting on so uh we're probably going to wrap this one up here whenever we end our end our stay here at Perfection Drive Lines. Uh, head back to the shop. You guys will have to stay tuned to the next video to uh, see how it all fits. So, uh, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Give Perfection Drive Lines a little bit of love for allowing us to do this. And as always, guys, we shall catch you on the next one. <coughs>